Should we have free breakfasts? Oh, you cheeky thing. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen. Today we are doing three TikTok viral breakfasts. We already did pesto eggs. <gasps> a lot of the TikTok recipes I've done have been really fun. So these quirky ones today are supposed to be awesome. I have extremely high hopes. Uh, Boston is here with me today, but other than that, I am genuinely uh, Macaulay Culkin style, home alone. Mrs. B and Phoebe are doing a charity walk, which as you know, I generally do each year. It's one called the Mendip Challenge, but uh, I did sign up for the 30 mile. I've made a donation, uh, but I am deciding to film today for reasons. Uh, I'm gonna spoil myself because I'm home alone by doing these free breakfast but if you would like to actually support uh phoebe and mrs b they have if you go on justgiving.com it's called becky and phoebe's page the mendip challenge so if you want to like literally leave a pound or something it would massively make their day as i say i should be doing it and be in agony now uh, i would have set off at 6 a.m but it's now 25 to 10. uh so we're gonna start we're gonna start with an overnight Weetabix like cheesecake thing, which sounds sensational, except we're not gonna do it overnight because it's Weetabix, which gets mushy almost instantly, doesn't it? Let's go. It all happens in here, and ideally you leave it overnight, but uh, apparently if you leave it for two hours, that is fine, so that's what we'll do. We have got some Weetabix, which is genuinely my favorite breakfast of choice. Remember I did some homemade cereal? We'll probably do a homemade Weetabix. I think it's basically just mushed up cardboard, though. I don't know if Weetabix is actually popular in countries other than the UK, to be honest. They are getting smaller though. And whenever you open Weetabix and as you work your way down uh, a pack, all the, it just gets a complete mess. Like the last one in the pack is just basically soil. We need to break these up anyway. So we're gonna take three of these. So we're making a breakfast cheesecake. Break it down into little Weetabix dust. So uh, like a cheesecake, I would have a biscuit or cookie base wherever you are in the world. This is our breakfast cheesecake effectively. So that is the role the Weetabix plays but we add to it now. Tablespoon, two and a half. That basically smells like my morning. <laughs> like coffee and Weetabix. A bit of moisture. This is some good quality maple syrup. So we're stirring this together, which I don't know. I guess that's gonna slightly dissolve the coffee a little bit. Looks a bit like granola, doesn't it? But it does have more princess layers, so we'll move on. All right, that is a banana that is thickly sliced. And if you're wondering where the ends were, this actually looks quite organized and neat, doesn't it? But generally, I have no idea what I'm doing. Hey ho, look at that, that looks pretty cool. Right, now something to soften this all up. I feel like there's plenty of variations that we could go on this recipe. Uh, like this is some peanut butter now, and I genuinely, if I uh, have peanut butter, well, especially if I make it, well, it's the best excuse I've got anyway, uh, I prefer it chunky. <laughs> so if you're making homemade, yeah, yeah, I wanted it that texture. Yeah, I like my homemade peanut butter to taste like a quarry. Mm. This is a tub of yogurt, and we're gonna just wing this. About a third of this tub of soft cheese, so cream cheese, boom. Sweeten it with some more maple syrup, love that. It's kind of like the best things of like a cold breakfast merged together in my eyes. Are we just not making a banoffee pie cheesecake? This is crazy. Just pan out a bit, boop, boop, boop. Look. It looks like a tub of ice cream. It's got some funky layers going on. We can't see the banana. There is definitely three sections uh, to that thing, but apparently at the end, we'll warm up some peanut butter and drizzle that on. So ideally you want to leave that overnight, uh, but two hours apparently is fine. So what I'd imagine is a little bit of, not all of it, because it's not going to hit the bottom, but some of that cream cheese mixture will soak into that Weetabix and kind of merge and soften it a little bit and the flavors will just mingle. So lid goes on. Let's jump to the next breakfast. <laughs> Next, some of you guys have been sending to me on social media across different platforms to try. So here we go, it's called Quiche Bagels. And sometimes when I get sent things from you guys, I kind of before click you guys, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> wow. Sometimes before clicking on a link, I try and envisage what it will be. So I was thinking that maybe that you, uh, you batter a bagel in quiche, you know, like when you're kind of deep frying it and then deep fry it, which could, I don't know if that'll work. The egg will just slide off, wouldn't it? I really want to try that now. Uh, if you can think of a way, let, let me know. Uh, but this is awesome. Ah, so folks, uh, quiche bagels, key ingredient, bagels. We have got this uh, bagel slicer. It's amazing. Uh, you've seen this on a previous gadget video. I've done a fair few bagel slices. There was one that was like a guillotine. 
Whereas we genuinely use this all the time at home. Get a knife like so, or you probably use a spoon, and you know, with a bagel, remember we've made them before, when you boil them they puff up and crazy. This exterior is kind of tough. A little bit like myself. But you just make a little indent to help give you a guide really, and then into the inner circle bit as well. Now there's two different ways you can do this in my opinion. The way you're supposed to do it is actually, well you're supposed to get your fingers and thumbs, get in there and pluck actual bagel flesh out. And you're supposed to discard it. I don't want to discard this, we're probably going to use this. As you plucked it, if you press the bread down and also against the sides there, well, this becomes deeper but also strengthens that base as well by giving it a bit more protection with the compressed crumbs in there. So when I said there was two ways to go with this, that was my other way. I would genuinely, if it was up to me, I would just press it down like that. Uh, so you're keeping the bread in there, but you're also building up the strength. That is actually how I, if I, if I invented this, that's how I would do it. Because you can see here, you're getting a fair bit of depth there. You're getting a similar height. So I think actually, I'm gonna do it my way. We'll jump to four halves of hollowed out bagelness. My conclusion is, in my humble opinion, press it down. We've got a nice flat surface there. It's all compressed and I feel it will strengthen the moat. Anyhow, that to one side for a moment because we've got to feel, feel these boats, man. That was a subtle reference of the pineapple boat video, which was basically the Titanic uh, <laughs> in, the, in the last video. So into this bowl, we are going to put about a tablespoon of cream. One egg, two eggs. Da -da 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 -da. Going to season it as well. Going to put some smoked salt on today. Also got a handful of cheddar cheese. Nice. And now one of the most popular uh, questions I get asked actually is, Barry, what's your favourite kitchen gadget? These are some chives. My favourite kitchen gadget, I like simplicity. Kitchen scissors are amazing. And these are some bacon strips. You can buy them in the supermarket already cooked. And I thought that was kind of perfect for this recipe. I'm just sort of giving this bacon a haircut. And my fear is that the runniness, the, uh, the egg, that's the official term for the egg, is gonna wanna go around like that. And at the angle I'm pouring it at, see all the cheese and the bacon is sitting to the bottom. In my opinion, again, I feel like, um, is, that, is that a new thing? Should we do upgrading TikToks? It would have been better to have done the egg and chives and seasoning, first of all, but then add it later. But now I've got all that cheese and bacon and some chives in there that I wanna sort of spread around. So only a teeny bit because it's gonna wanna spill out. Let's blooming well bake them. Okay, in they go for about 10 minutes. The only thing that I'm not sure about with that, and I'm hopefully wrong, I usually am, uh, but the egg, I feel like it's gonna soak into the bagel and just be like kind of like a round, like inflatable rubber ring, but just thin. I want it to sort of puff up and be crazy, but it doesn't matter. I don't think you're supposed to serve them uh, together, like joining them back as one bagel, but I think we'll have some fun with that and try that too. Uh, and also it's bacon, cheese, eggs, all that stuff going on. It's, yeah, it's pretty good breakfast. I'm gonna see if I can get hold of Mrs. B. Hello. You're, you're on video, please do not swear. Hey, Vivi. We just went the wrong way for a little bit. You went the wrong way? Yeah. Are you having fun? All right, we turned around now, we're back on track. All right, have fun. Bye. Bye. I just looked, it's 25 and a half degrees right now. <laughs> like for England, that's actually quite hot. So they're probably struggling in that heat, drinking lots of water, but I'm actually not that bad about thinking about 30 miles struggling in that. Yeah, it's nice to have a year off and make three breakfasts. Let's see what these turn out like. They have puffed up, that's amazing. I was really worried they're gonna go flat. Look at those. That is amazing. Oh, and my little croutons are toasted as well and I nearly burnt my face on the pan. I'm gonna let these cool. Oh, I need that oven for this last one. I want that tray for our toast. We're gonna to make yogurt toast, which is fairly similar to the bagels, except this is more of a sweeter version. We kind of make a custardy thing with the yogurt. So is it custard toast? I think it was also known as that. So you get a slice of bread. It isn't telling me to do this, but I feel like I might compress it down again just to give it a bit more stability like we did with the bagels. And we kind of layer this custard on top and bake fruit into it. And it's supposed to be incredible. Um, I don't know whether it's gonna caramelize in some way or form a crust. I'm just really excited. So let's make the uh, yogurt that's a custard that's confused about being a yogurt or a custard. Yeah. So there's our yogurt, egg, honey, and a cinnamon. Oh, I love cinnamon. 
And that's actually a little bit wetter than um, our other mixture, the quiche one, but with the egg in there, it should bake through. Which is why when it comes to the bread, a bit like the bagel was before, I'm gonna press it down. Oh, there we go. That is like really nice and compressed and it just gives you that bit more stability. Right, I've got this uh, strawberry hulla that I actually uh, did a little giveaway to patrons and everyone got one on a certain tier, which is pretty cool. One of my favorite gadgets we've got here. But I have also got, I don't know if you guys remember this strawberry hulla. It's kind of like a pen knife version. <laughs> I feel like every British person should take this to Wimbledon if they're watching the tennis. We just need some sliced strawberries. There we are then. Uh, the two uh, breads that we've compressed slightly and this I'm a bit more comfortable about doing from the dish because it is basically one combo. There's no heavy bacon in there or cheese, but we will garnish it. And so far, so good. This is holding well. Again, so many different ways that you could go with this. I suppose you could do it with like brioche as well. So we'll sit some strawberries in. I don't know what's gonna happen to them, whether they're gonna get like risen up or get concealed as it bakes, I'm not sure. Concealed? Bye. <coughs> And for a little bit of an extra twist, we're gonna get some lemon zest on top. Yeah, baby. Da, 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 da. Look at that. Well, this has all gone rather swimmingly today. The only other thing to add is a lot of these ingredients have been quite dog friendly, such as a little bit of bacon, the strawberries and the yogurt. He's been fed quite well off camera, let's just put it that way. Oh, look at those folks, <laughs> little faces. There's a teeny, teeny little wobble in them still, but apparently that's what you bake it to. You've had a solid 15 minutes in there. I let them cool for a little bit. I warm the peanut butter up, and then we serve all three together. All right, so this has had two hours in the fridge, nice and cool. Um, it hasn't turned anything different there. Still looks a little bit like a cottage pie, to be honest, from the sides. But then apparently what we do just to enhance the peanut butterness is drizzle that on. And that is it done. I can't wait to taste it. The toasts, which have a very slight jelly wobble in it, really cool, and nice crusts on the side from where they've baked from being normal bread to, well, toasts. Fresh lace of honey on there. Oh, wow. Right, should we have free breakfasts? I think we shall. Before we taste this, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, make sure your notifications are turned on so you get told about all new videos and keep any ideas coming in. Um, I am a trifle gutted, actually. Um, very British phrase, that, a trifle. I'm a trifle bit gutted. These looked amazing when we first got them out, and as we've uh, worked on the toasts, they've kind of sagged and gone flush. They've lost their puffiness. Uh, but I'm sure all the flavor's still there, so it's not so bad. I probably should start eating things as soon as I make them rather than wait until the end, except when it comes to a thumbnail, I kind of like to have everything in it. But anyhow, let's have a cold quiche bagel. I'm excited for this. Mmm, mmm, wow. Of course, quiche is quite nice and often served cold at like picnics and stuff. I mean, I think I've really ramped the cheese up in there. That is sensational. I really like the idea there of getting some cheese and fusing that together as a mega bagel, I think. We'll see what happens if I can eat this as well. It's a lot of food. <laughs> oh my word, that is custody, yeah. That is such <laughs> like a random transfer from like the tanginess, the salty, cheesy baconness of that to like the basically strawberry infused, the juices from the strawberry. And that's why I'm laughing because it's kind of like molded it. It really is a nice firm set on there. It's molded where the strawberry was. I don't hate it by any means, but I think I would have liked a teeny bit more sweetness on there. So maybe if you make it, put a bit of icing sugar on there, something like that. It's a bit weird. There's something like, why is this very similar thing? Why does that make sense? And that just, it just feels a bit, I much prefer that. Anyhow, this is the one that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, we have got the Weetabix sat down the bottom there with the coffee granules and we're gonna push through. Here we go, try and get all that up. And I'm gonna dunk it in some of the peanut butter. So it looks a little bit like a cake, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. You're literally eating pure coffee granules. <laughs> but the moisture from that cream cheese layer with the peanut butter and the Weetabix texture just kind of feels like crunch really. It's not softened at any means, even at the point where it's been resting on it. It's got a little, a little bit there, but so much layer of crunch there. Mm, I completely forgot about the banana layer. That really balanced that out then, because two and a half tablespoons of coffee is quite a lot. But that is amazing, Ex uh, massive. I mean, I don't think you're supposed to make it that big. But despite my excitement for that, I mean, it felt like I was having a dessert for breakfast, which I don't think anyone's ever gonna complain about. My favorite one today, I mean, what a time to be alive anyway for all of this. 
was the bagels. They were absolutely sensational. So any other suggestions you've seen on TikTok or any other viral recipes from famous chefs, blogs, I put it on my Barry Tries playlist. Do check that out, have a barathon, put your sweatband on. Thank you so much for the support guys. And if you wanna check out uh, Mrs. B and Phoebe's sponsor link, uh, no pressure, but if you fancy, I'm sure it'll make their day. Cheers guys, give them a try. See you later. Bye. If I take you to my crib, you'll be in for a thrill. I'll be spitting on the menu, chuck some food on the grill. I like to do my cooking at 10 to 9. But you can do it any time and you'll be just fine. Bonus scene, the double quiche bagel stack. Cheese in here, like this. Oh my gosh. Oh, blimey. That was a minute in the microwave. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, you cheeky thing. That is like a feast in my mouth, and if I'm not careful, I will demolish the whole thing. I feel like that is the way to go. If you're gonna do it properly, you might as well make it back into the bagel it belongs. No one wants a semi-detached bagel. Enjoy, folks. See you later.